Hello, you might have clicked on this video because you have just finished running your stand simulation, generate some excellent results, and you want to know if the stand behavior is actually consistent with what you will expect structurally. And one of the parameters that you need to use to do this is called the longitudinal retraction. So this is what I want to show you in this video. Let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. As we get started with this modeling, so the first thing that I want to show you here is this is a typical picture of a stent and I've identified certain points here which you can see as these little red dots and these are the nodal points that will be kinematically tracked. So if you look at the view of the same stent, this is longitudinal view, so if you look at it from the side view, what you will notice right at the top here are the two nodal sets which I've kind of highlighted there and they are also the same from the side view here. So I'm going to call them the proximal or the top nodal sets. And we'll also have a similar thing at the bottom end and this will also reflect it at that part and that's the distal or the bottom nodal set. Remember what we're trying to determine here is the longitudinal retraction. So we need to measure, find the total length of this stent and see how much this total length will change during the deformation and that will lead us to determining the longitudinal retraction. So if we look more closely here I've got node 1 and node 2 for the top and node 3 and node 4 for the bottom ones and the overall length of that stent will be determined as L, I, J where I, J refers to the combination between 1 and 2 and we'll also obtain these coordinate positions for the node 1 and node 2 which using the Euclidean norm you can calculate the length of node 1 and node 2, the length separation of node 1 and node 2 using this Euclidean norm expression. So we then also determine what is the coordinate position of node 3 and node 4 and that will also help us to determine the length of 3 and 4. Now, to look more closely, so at the beginning of the of this simulation, the first stage is the unexpanded length. So this is just a length that, as designed from the CAD geometry. However, once the simulation happens, the next stage is where you get to the fully expanded state of the stent. So let's say the balloon has fully expanded and the stent is being deployed in the artery. So the length, original expanded length reduces to this L expanded. And then once the balloon is deflated, there is a recalled length, which we see here, okay, which again is like the system is recalling back, but not to the unexpanded state. So you notice here that the different lengths associated with that, and we need to know all these different lengths as we carry on with our simulation. If you then determine the individual lengths according to the different times associated with the deformation, which is what I've called here the kinematics of the stent length, then this is the kind of profile that you generate, which tells you what's happening to the overall length of the stent. Initially, at the beginning, the unexpanded length is about 10, because 10 millimeter is the length of this particular stent that we're modeling. And then later on in the fully expanded state, that length reduces to something around eight something, eight, and then after the recall, it increases back to maybe around 8.7, 8.9 and whatever. So these lengths are things that we need to track and we're going to use them to determine the longitudinal retraction. The expression that we're going to use for calculating this longitudinal retraction is the length in the expanded state minus the unexpanded length divided by the expanded length times 100%. So this gives you a quantified value of what the longitudinal retraction would be. What you will find that this will be a negative value because of the fact that there's a retraction, a reduction in length. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about some of the things that I'm talking about, I published it in this journal. So please do find this journal. If this is the kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so, so that when content like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. I also would encourage you to share, like, and leave me a comment in the comment section of this video of maybe ideas or videos you would like me to make or anything related to the video that interests you. Let us get into Abacus now as we begin this modeling. All right, so this is a picture of the stent that we are going to model. The first thing we need to do is to go onto this, uh, the part name, the part module, this is the name of the stent. We need to create a set, two sets that we're going to track. So if we double click on the set here, so the first thing we'll probably find here is the ref point top. So this is what I'm going to work with. You can either work in the geometry mode or the uh, the node mode. So, but let's look at, leave it in the geometry mode. So you click continue. So what this means that it gives you options of what you can actually track. So since what we're looking at is tracking the overall length of the material. So um, let's start with the innermost part of this for what we're going to track. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this point and press down shift and then pick the second point there. 
so they are dramatically opposite which is important for us and that is the top so we'll do the same for the bottom so uh, and this will be ref point bottom so we'll continue as well so remember we track this ones so if we change it around so this would be what we need to track so we again we press that press down shift and select the side that's directly opposite it and click done now what we're going to do is so let's put it on the side view now so that we can just compare those two points so the, this is the one that's at the top and this is the one on the bottom so you can see the two are together then the next thing is we go straight to the history output and i want you to only have two history outputs in your model so this will be a reference point for the top history output and with that so we are tracking first the top and we are looking at the coordinates coordinate values that is the x y and z coordinate positions that's all you don't need to track anything else so that's for the top so we'll do the same for the reference point for the bottom and then you continue and again you track those set of variables for the bottom again coordinates three which represents x y and z values so if we go back to our model right here and then so clearly what we want to do is find which one is the left which one is the right even in this case so this is basically the ref at the top and so i'm going to know this as my left and this one as my right in in this just like this image shows here we'll go to view under part display option and under mesh so i'll tick up and i say okay i want to show me the node level so let's zoom in just onto this left one this first one and then you click apply so it gives us 147 so you note that as 147 for the left and then you go back and then zoom to the right and then go in to see exactly what's happening here and then you show again so 374 so 147 and 374 for left and right for for this so you do the same for the down part and you, you note those values so so we've got our grouping and the connection in the way it's supposed to be and this is sort of what the image will look like so we've got that all done the remainder of the model again uh, the usual things of finding the right kind of boundary conditions all that setting up the model and creating the job and then submitting the job to run so i've already run this model previously okay so the, then the next thing we need to do now is to look at the history output that we want to track so if we continue here so clearly this is the history output that we indicated i want to track so on the top so 337 goes together with 374 because they are together so this is basically the the bottom and the top so 337 and this goes together that and that so these are the node sets that are on the left of this so we can then plot that so if we plot that this is the result that we obtain and everything looks okay as we'll expect so we we'll just go plug in to excel utilities current plot so we'll export this into excel so this is the result we get in excel so this is the time value this is the x time value again another x for the second point time value y time value y and then we we'll carry on so what we're going to do is just to delete because i only want one time value and then look at only the variable so if i se select all the time coordinates leaving that so that means now i have my time the 2x the 2y and the 2z coordinates for the two points that we are tracking so i'm going to select all those point control h select and control suit copy so i've already formatted the excel script so this is the excel script that we we have we've already formatted that we're going to use for this study so i'm going to paste the, the data we carried across into this location so that's the data remember these are the two nodal numbers we're looking for so node one and node three on the left side and the y-axis obviously is the direction through which the longitudinal axis is oriented so this is important because if it is a different axis then a different combination will be required in calculating the length then the original length is determined the expanded length and the record length automatically determined as well for us and then the longitudinal retraction is also calculated and like i said it's a negative value because the material is contracting and this is the nodal positions that we generate from the model and finally the kinematics of the stent length will be what is shown here that means means how the stent is changing with time and, and you can see it starts with the original length of 10 it reduces to this value and then records back to that value so we generate that for the first case which is the proximal distal go back to abacus for the next points again we'll do history variables and then so remember 337 and 374 was what we use so the next two will be 147 
and then another 147, another 147. So for the X value, the Y value and the Z value, and then we'll plot that. So once we generate this plot, again, plug in two Excel utilities from this current plot. So this will export it into Excel file. So this is the Excel file. Again, we we'll just delete all the time columns after the very first one so that we can then have only the first term, only time, and then the other values are there. So we'll select all that. So this is the Excel file. Now we're looking at the second point and this second point will be based on the proximal distal. So we paste that information here. So this is the second point. Now the remainder values, again, the nodal numbers of relevance, everything, and we calculate the original values and then the longitudinal retraction. So the value plotted together in terms of the X and Z, which is what is relevant is shown here. And then also subsequently, we'll also look at what the kinematics of the stent. Okay, so when put everything together, we'll end up with this comparison plot again, which shows us the node labels that we're working with in the proximal distal to the left, proximal distal to the right, as shown in this figure. The plots are together, there's really no difference in the kinematics of the stent in the comparison. And there's slight little changes in terms of the longitudinal retraction, but they are spot on exactly onto, on, on each other. And this is the, the, the way. So, this gives us a way of extracting the longitudinal retraction the system if you are interested in learning about how to do a similar thing for elastic recall this is the video that you want to see and if you just want to see how to set that model like i've done then this is the video that you want to look at thank you for interest in this video and i'll see you in the next thank you bye bye